Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Black Zombies as requested by my supporters on Patreon, featuring Gisa, the Hellraiser, as our commander. This 5 mana 4 4 has a ward, making the opponent pay 2 mana and 2 life to target it. We get to give our skeletons and zombies plus 1 plus 1 and menace, and whenever we commit a crime, aka target the opponent or their permanents in any way, shape, or form, we get to make a pair of tapped zombie tokens. This only triggers once per turn, but to get the most out of Gisa, it's good to be able to. To enable it both in our turn as well as the opponent's turn, that way we still get to make four zombie tokens per turn cycle as opposed to just a pair of them. And then I've split up the deck to help with a breakdown here, starting with our first category, which is mana acceleration, because we are trying to cast a five mana commander, which is pretty pricey nowadays, so it's good to get it in play ahead of schedule. Then we've got the largest category, which are all the zombie related cards, lots of zombie creatures, cards that can make zombie tokens, or that synergize with other zombies. Then we've got lots of spot removal and sweepers that can also help us commit crimes with Gisa once in play. And then my favorite category are the repeatable crime enablers. Tiny Bones joins up, makes it so when a legendary enters we get to target the opponent to commit a crime, but these random artifacts like Relic of Progenitus and Scrabbling Claws can also each turn target the opponent to exile a card from their graveyard, and just by targeting the opponent with those we get to commit a crime and make a pair of zombie tokens. And then we've got a whole category of Liliana Planeswalkers, most of them having zombie synergies. And finally the miscellaneous section has a bunch more card draw engines which can complement some of our creature synergies. So that's the deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, starting with the mana acceleration. Cannot go without a dark ritual to speed things up. Then at two mana we've got plenty of ramp artifacts with Signet, Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, Solar Transformer and the Iron Crag. Could also consider playing the Black Medallion, but we do have a lot of artifacts that don't necessarily benefit from that discount. And then Ashnod's Altar can be a way of sacrificing some of our zombies to make two colorless mana, so that can also give us a lot of extra mana to work with if we can keep enabling Gisa turn after turn. And then now we've got a pair of banners, Heraldic Banner pumping black creatures giving them one extra power, and Patchwork Banner giving all our zombies plus one plus one. And then the Celestus can also give us a bit of extra card selection as it switches between day and night, and Worn Power Stone can make two mana if we get to untap with it. Then taking a look at our zombies, we start out with one of the better ones, Champion of the Perished, growing whenever a zombie enters, so it can quickly get out of hand. Crib Breaker can tap multiple zombies to draw a card, can also generate additional tokens by discarding cards from our hand. Diagraph Ghoul just a tapped 2-2, not too impressive. Dread Wanderer can also maybe return out of our graveyard. We've got the Steward, which is actually quite good here, since we can play it and then just save it until we play Gisa, and then we can immediately sacrifice it, targeting the opponent to make them discard a card, which counts as committing a crime, so we get to make a pair of zombies right away. Then there's a Shambling Ghast, which can leave behind a treasure token. Got Jadar making a zombie token with Decay each turn, also good with some of our sacrifice synergies. The Reaver also makes a pair of zombies. And then a Priest, another way to maybe immediately commit a crime with Gisa. This is why we have snow covered swamps in our mana base, so we can immediately activate it and take out an opposing creature. Then there's the Adversary, which can also make multiple zombies if we pay additional mana. The Undead Augur is a great card draw engine for the zombie deck whenever one of our creatures dies. We've got the Diagraph Colossus, which can also make additional zombie tokens. Headless Rider will replace our zombies with additional 2-2 zombie tokens when they die. Lord of the Accursed can give our team plus one plus one and potentially menace as well. We've got Midnight Reaper replacing our non-token creatures that die. Timurit Calls the Dead can make multiple zombie tokens, eventually gain some life and scry. The Death Baron can give our team plus one plus one and Death Touch. Murderous Rider, both a removal spell as well as a life linking zombie. Liliana's Mastery can make a pair of zombie tokens, giving them all plus one plus one. And finally, Grave Titan, not a zombie himself, but will make a pair of zombie tokens when it enters and attacks. Then taking a look at our removal and other one-off crime enablers, Cling to Dust actually I could put in the other category since we can potentially escape it multiple times to keep targeting things in Graveyard. Cut Down and Fatal Push at 1 mana give us some nice removal, and Duress and Thoughtseize, my preferred 1 mana discard spells. Then we've got a Bitter Triumph, which can also maybe hit Planeswalkers. Feed the Swarm can go after enchantments as well. And then go for the Throat and shoot the Sheriff, some nice 2 mana instant speed options. And Crippling Fear can be a nice one sided board wipe. Luckily, spares Gisa despite it not being a zombie, it still survives. And then Dark Salvation can make multiple zombie tokens and take out opposing creatures at the same time. 
Then we get to our repeatable crime enablers. Tiny Bones joins up whenever a legendary creature enters, also makes the opponent discard when we first play it. And then Relico Progenitus and Scrabbling Claws are probably the best ones, because even if the opponent's graveyard is empty, we're still just targeting the opponent directly with these, so we can still commit a crime. Whereas with uh, Soul Cauldron and Unlicensed Hearse, the opponent does need to have cards in graveyard for us to target. And then we've got the plant here, which can also trigger each turn, potentially draining the opponent to death or drawing us extra cards. And then we get to our Liliana Planeswalkers with Liliana of the Veil. We've got the Last Hope, which can also eventually ultimate to make an army of zombie tokens each turn. Liliana Untouched by Death is probably the most synergistic with the zombies, as we can potentially mill them and get them back out of the graveyard. Liliana Death's Majesty can also reanimate creatures and make zombie tokens each turn, and Dreadhorde General can also make zombies and draws additional cards when our creatures die. And then the miscellaneous section has a black market connections, great at ramping as well as generating additional card advantage or maybe shapeshifters, which also count as zombies. Got Arena to draw one card each turn. Carvac is another crime payoff card, as we can get back our black spells out of the graveyard. Grave Pact will punish the opponent for removing our creatures, as they will now have to sacrifice a creature themselves, especially powerful if we get one of our sacrifice engines going, like maybe our Ashnaut's Altar. And then finally Bolas the Citadel to start casting spells off the top for free in exchange for our life total. And then our mana base has some good utility lands as well. Castle to draw, Tower can make an extra mana by sacking a creature, Got Cavern to maybe make our commander or zombies uncounterable. Desert is another way to commit a crime by targeting an opposing creature. Even if it doesn't take it out with one damage, it still counts as committing a crime. Dust Bowl can target the opponent's lands to commit a crime each turn. We've got Faceless Haven and Mutavolt as creature lands that also count as zombies. And then Nykthos, as well as Three Tree City, are ways to generate additional mana if we have lots of devotion or lots of zombies in play. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Emoti, blue-green, a ramp, and uh, our hand's not bad. I do like the combo of Priest with Midnight Reaper to immediately draw a card. Opponent's off to a nice start. So we can take out the Elvish Mystic at the very least. Yeah, that seems worthwhile, try to slow the opponent down a little bit. Gotta hit our land drops as well. Carvac, a way to maybe get back our priest eventually. And a vast would surge. So nothing I can destroy next turn. So I might just play Death Baron. Now the Palantir seems better. Can maybe help hit our land drops and a way to commit crimes as well. But yeah, we're a little bit limited on mana. So. Is our opponent going to let us draw? I guess putting Banner on top makes sense. That way they take more damage. And then I would still draw the land eventually. Opponent passes with a bunch of mana untapped. Not playing Emoti just yet. So they might have some big counter spell available. For now, maybe still attack with a Midnight Reaper. And then see if they want to maybe counter the Shambling Ghast. And I could see playing Carvac here. Also resolves. End of turn. Wouldn't be able to get back the uh, Priest. That opponent had a whole breaker Horror. And that's going to try and take over. Grave Pact wouldn't be bad to have could potentially keep it on top, although our opponent would just bounce it with a hole breaker. I guess it's four damage. Don't really need auger. Ah, opponent takes the damage. So they are at 12. And now the hole breaker can bounce the plant here. Bounce our creatures. And it's going to be tricky to keep anything in play until we deal with it. Not sure if they have a counterspell at the ready for Feed the Swarm as well. I'm going to go with hopefully they don't. It's 
step one attack with Midnight Reaper. In case they want to quote unquote counterfeit the swarm by bouncing it, we can still replay it. Alright, that worked. And then next up, probably gotta go Mindstone over Shambling Ghast. Had I gone Mindstone first and then feed the swarm, I still would have been able to replay Ghast. But then if they had some conditional counter spell, it could have been bad. Put on just casting the seven mana dragon here. And they also get to scry with the orb of dragonkind, so there is a bit of a dragon sub theme. Draw with Uprising, this also tramples. And we're desperately behind on mana, opponents drawing cards and scrying. So, yeah, we're uh, in a bit of trouble. No way to immediately commit a crime now for Gisa either. So what's the best I can do? Play Grave Titan. And then I guess we'll have to trade it for their dragon. What's the alternative? Yeah, Feed the Swarm is going to cost too much life as well, in case we wanted to get it back with Karvek. So, yeah, I think it's Grave Titan. That resolves. And now a Glint Weaver to pump their creatures. At least Grave Titan has Death Touch. So I'm forced to trade here. We draw off Midnight Reaper, which is becoming a bit of a liability now. Definitely don't have the life to leverage Karvek. Three Tree City. Not a bad card. Nykthos needs a bit more help first, but uh, can play Shambling Ghast and then the city would generate one extra mana here. Can even play the Baron first and then still play Gisa. Name Zombie. Alright, we're on the board. Creatures have Menace and Death Touch. Can I afford to attack? Yeah, I guess we'll start getting in. Opponent falls to 8. All their creatures do have Trample, so we do have to be pretty careful. Panther Cascades. Hitting another ramp creature, that's fine. Although it still draws with Uprising. And I Tatiova. Alright. So, I don't think we're dead on board. Just have to be careful with Midnight Reaper. Do have a lot of mana now, and yeah, our opponent scoops it up, so... Can uh, look to see what we would have done this turn. Is just an all-out attack good enough? With Menace, our opponent can only block two creatures. So yeah, just an all-out attack pretty much would have sealed it. But uh, otherwise, Planter can still commit a crime end of turn, make more zombies. Could also maybe gain life with a Celestus if needed. And then uh, I don't think Karvek would really be all that useful here. But uh, yeah, still nice to have. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Roxanne, so removal could be pretty useful here. Yeah, we'll try it. And then cling to dust, a crime enabler. And does our opponent have the turn one elf? They do not. And I'll keep up removal, so next turn I can go Celestus plus Crib Breaker. That's going to be a bit more efficient, although opponent turns out to just have a ramp artifact. Stick to the plan. Even though Crib Breaker is likely to just die to Roxanne. And Roxanne, luckily, not an outlaw. But it's gonna demand answers, discards, and draws. And an Elvish Mystic now. Alright, so I still think we wanna play Gisa. And then next turn, we'll be able to answer Roxanne and make some zombies. 
Maybe cling to dust in their turn to commit another crime. Opponent going for a Penharmonicon instead. And yeah, they might be short on mana to cast Roxanne. We draw Fatal Push as well. So we'll start here. Attack. And then in their turn we can cling. Opponent will be able to play Roxanne after all, but they won't have the mana to take out Gisa with it. And then now I suppose we could wait on Cling to Dust. And just uh, shoot the Sheriff or go for the throats. And our opponent's gonna take out one zombie. So they're still pretty far behind. Although I guess every meteorite also triggers twice with Panharmonicon. Forgot that interaction. So they actually get to take out a pair of zombies. Yeah, that makes it a lot more powerful. So they might be able to keep up with all the creatures we generate. Cribbreaker probably still wants to attack as opposed to draw cards. Should have maybe cast a Cling to Dust beforehand. There's plenty of uh, non-creature targets as well. And a Grave Pact, I guess, could be worth playing, although it does not necessarily commit a crime, so it might be better off just waiting and answering Roxanne to make more zombies. It's gonna be a spiteful banditry. Yeah, that's painful. Wipes our board. Makes treasure. Not that Grave Pact would have helped. And then now our opponents get the mana to redeploy Roxanne and maybe even pay for the ward, so we don't really get any advantage from playing Gisa. So best I can do is maybe a Grave Pact, keep up Murderous Rider, and then wait for a better opportunity to make zombies with Gisa. But yeah, the problem now is that Roxanne just kind of pays for itself with every time they play it. So it's just going to keep coming down, making more meteorites. If I respond now, they can still float the mana. So I'm not sure how we're supposed to deal five more damage. Ancient Copper Dragon resolves. I guess that's a good target for now. And a Soul Cauldron. Any useful abilities? Not really. I guess the Crib Breaker to maybe draw. So if I were to replay Gisa, it just dies. So that's no good. I guess if we can get a creature up to 5 toughness, it has a chance of surviving. But Murder Strider only goes up to 4. Yeah. What to do, what to do. Maybe start with Murder Strider, make some devotion with Nykthos. And then... We can loot with uh, Celestus. Find a steward. Also not very helpful. Still probably have to take out Roxanne, but uh, yeah, it never really ends. And then might still be better off with uh, the cauldron to commit crimes. Now with Nykthos, if we can keep the Murderous Rider, we have enough devotion to maybe play Gisa and Cauldron in the same turn. Start making those zombies again. If they take out Murderous Rider, Roxanne dies, so opponent's going face. 
And that's also 8 damage each time. Still 4 mana remaining for a Settle the Wilds. Liliana also answers Roxanne. So I guess that's the sequence here. Play Liliana. Then tap Nykthos to play Gisa. Happy to help, but I'm taking the credit. And then target the opponents to commit a crime. Attack. Gaining three. And we'll see what happens. Ponon does have a million mana here. They're looking at my lands for a Starve Extinction, another board wipe. I was not expecting this many board wipes. But I guess if her opponent's not playing too many mana elves themselves, it makes sense. No creatures in play for Grave Pact. Ponon's at two. And an Itali, the follow up. Not bad. Casting a Star of Extinction and a Dinosaur in the same turn feels kind of wrong. So is there anything for Soul Cauldron to maybe use here? Not really seeing it. And then Itali also triggers twice of Panharmonicon. Finding Untouched by Death and a Root. At least they don't have many zombies. I guess this would have been a way to win the game with her opponent at 2 life. So if they hadn't uh, stolen my Liliana, who knows? We could have uh, dealt a final blow. Yeah, our Grave Pact has yet to take out any creature. Ashnod's Altar is missing Sacrifice Fodder. Opponent also destroyed a land in the process, so we're down to 6 mana. And uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot I can do, sadly. Activate Celestus, try and find removal for Itali, which can take us out in one attack, although... Roxanne can also burn us out, so I don't think there's any answers left, sadly. Can uh, cling to dust. And see where we end up. And dust bowl. And that should do it. Well, we tried. But uh, yeah, Panharmonicon was just too good. Doubling not only the Entered Battlefield trigger from Roxanne, but also the Meteorites. But at the end of the day, it was also the two sweepers that really did the heavy lifting. So Meteorites go face, and then Itali can just attack. But yeah, that's why Roxanne is such a busted commander, the fact that it's can just pay for itself with its ETB effect. Means that you're never going to get rid of it, unless you have counter spells to counter it the first time around. Alright, GG's. Sad Grave Pact noises. Did not do anything at all, except provide three devotion, I guess. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Nicol Bola's Dragon God, a very powerful commander. Go for the throw, it's not going to be particularly useful against it. I do like the rest of my hand, Transformer into Connections. Got our own Planeswalker, although Bolas can also take those out. So maybe I should be a little bit pickier in case they discard or counter the Connections. Alright, this will do. And then Scrabbling Claws is a great enabler for Gisa. A ramp into Bolas' Citadel would be kind of ironic against a Bolas deck. But our opponent's got the Thoughtseize anyway, so goodbye Citadel. Unless they've got another answer lined up. Alright, takes a Transformer anyway. Still gonna keep their graveyard clean. And then I don't have a play lined up for next turn. Turn after we can cast an uncounterable Gisa. Ooh, nice. Black Market Connections. So, yeah, let's cast it. So 
So that also allows us to maybe play the Citadel next turn if we make a treasure. And our opponent's going to seek new knowledge. A Surveil Land. So they do have two mana up. Yeah, could be convinced to play Gisa. Maybe not go for the Shapeshifter, since it might be a little bit overkill if they do have a board wipe. But I will choose the other modes. And then we cannot name Zombie, Gisa, Human Warlock. Um, we probably have more Warlocks than we have Humans, but I didn't double check. Play Gisa, and then Claws can immediately trigger here. I'll hang on to the Crib Breaker as well. Opponent has the Edict, so that will actually deal with Gisa, sadly, but not before we make some zombies. So I suppose had I played Crib Breaker first and then Gisa, we could have sacrificed the Crib Breaker instead. Back to the Command Zone. Can still replay it next turn if needed. And Rusko, alright, so our opponent's not here to make any friends. But now the coast might be clear for Bolas' Citadel, which can take over in its own way. Yeah, I think that's uh, worth a shot here. Maybe should not have played my land yet. In case I can play one of the top. And yeah, Bolas the Citadel defeats Bolas. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Facing Itali, Primal, Conquer, Red, Green, Ramp. This hand feels a little weak. This has a bit more potential. A little slow with lots of 3 mana plays. And luckily no 1 mana elf for them. And now we've got removal on turn two. So our curve looks a bit better. Plant here can be a way to immediately commit a crime with Gisa as well. Although we might have to play the Power Stone first. Vast would search, so yeah, there's no opportunity for me to interact with her mana acceleration. All non-creature spells. And our opponent can play Itali next turn already. Let's see what they hit. Grazer and Idle, so it could have been worse. Still makes it easy for them to replay Itali if we remove it, so we may not want to. So what's my plan? I guess if we play Gisa we can still commit a crime with cut down on Grazer. So that might be the plan. Opponent may be looking at transforming a tally. Alright, luckily we do have a 2-2 Shambling Ghast, so we're not dead to a single attack. Make a treasure. And we can still deal with the indestructible creature thanks to Liliana. So that's step one. Step two plant here. Could also thought seize them. This is my home, and I don't appreciate so lots of crimes are happening. One of your friends has to leave. With Palantir we have some control over the top of our deck for in case they replay Itali. It's gonna be worth it to have a look. Just in case. A braid. Probably worth taking now. And attack for 10. So yeah, the slimmest of margins, 9 poison, land land. So Itali looks specifically for non-lands, so there's no real advantage to keeping those. And they let us draw. 
Okay. So they're gonna replay a tally. We can feed the swarm. So hopefully it's not too bad here. Opponent finding provisioner and wow, Liliana Dreadhorde General. Doesn't get much worse than that. Although opponent just making a zombie with it. Since I guess they didn't want to sacrifice two creatures each. And then now we can play Death Baron to pump our team. Clear Tally. And that should be pretty decent here. Even though our opponent gets to draw a card. We should be attacking for lethal. Opponent can block one of the zombies or block Gisa. And that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing the Necro Bloom, so a landfall deck. We've got what looks like a keeper. Cut down a way to maybe commit a crime. For now, play Crypt Draker. Can also draw us additional cards with enough zombies in play. And a Mesmeric Orb, so opponent's milling us. Okay. A licensed Hearse can potentially shut down some Graveyard Synergies. For now, play Jadar. So not sure what uh, benefits Mesmeric Orb has in their deck. Maybe allows them to get lands back out of the graveyard at some point. Not too concerned about getting milled out. So play the banner. And attack. If we have hearse on the battlefield, we can immediately commit crimes with Gisa. So it could have been a reason to play it instead of Jadar. But we're getting some good damage in, in the meantime. Our opponents could have tapped some of their lands to mill more with Mesmeric Orb, but didn't. And now Loran can blow up our banner. At least they're not destroying the hearse, so that actually gives us time to set up hearse into Gisa if we draw the lanes. Could have also attacked with a Faceless Haven here, and they milled a Dread Wanderer for us. It's gonna take me a second to get it back. But uh, for now, play the hearse. And then could also activate Crib Breaker to make a zombie. Still doesn't let me draw here. Not sure if we want to keep the Citadel. We're not too far from casting it. So I think I'm still better off attacking. And then we'll want land 5 for uh, Gisa for sure. And then we can wait on the hearse to maybe exile something specific that we might be worried about. And there's the Necrobloom. And a fetch lane to make a couple plants. So what do we start with? Probably their lands, I guess, that they want to dredge. So a target to fetch lanes. I guess that's why they're interested in milling, just to potentially dredge some lanes back. Cling to dust to more graveyard hate. Alright, time for Gisa. Gisa. 
And then I don't mind attacking with the zombie. Opponent will fetch. Could be a good target for the hearse. And then before they untap and dredge, I think we get rid of the Mesa. And then what else? Maybe a Boseju, which could blow up the hearse otherwise. So we do have lots of tap permanence for Mesmeric Orb, but again, I don't think our opponent's trying to mill us to death. They're just trying to fill their graveyard. And they did uh, mill over Timeless Witness, another good card to exile. Could also flash back a Cling to Dust to make that happen. Get Rock Monster, yeah, that's the combo with the Necrobloom. So their opponent's about to go off here. And draw a lot of cards. And then they can dredge the lands back. And as long as they keep hitting the lands, they can keep drawing. Necrobloom close to making zombies. Opponent's got an extra land drop from Gitrog Monster as well. So the fun continues. Our opponent's Picked up Iganjo, can be channeled for just one mana. So, plants versus zombies about to turn into zombies versus zombies. Our opponent's life total is dwindling. And we're about to have a fun turn with Bolas' Citadel, I think. If we can find some sort of board wipe, that's mostly one-sided. We might be able to attack for the win. While their opponent's got their own zombies, in case of a crippling fear. Our opponent deciding what to do next. They've got a pretty full graveyard. Two mana available and they're looking at unlicensed hearse and they decide to scoop it up. Yeah, I guess the hearse is pretty effective in this matchup. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We're facing Kalia, a very powerful commander. Our hand is missing some removal for Kalia, which uh, we probably need. Although it is still tempting to keep because we have great crime enablers for Gisa and Ramp. So I'm going to keep and hopefully our first couple draws include a little bit of additional interaction. Our opponent could also be worried about removal, so they might also be looking for a way to maybe disrupt us with a discard spell. Could have also considered milling myself just to increase my odds of uh, putting a creature in the graveyard for a cauldron. Now we're looking at Transformer. And then next turn, either Power Stone or we can double spell Iron Crag with Cauldron. So we can maybe set up Gisa. And then both commit a crime with Tiny Bones as well as once again in the opponent's turn with Cauldron. So yeah, maybe if we make enough zombies, we can keep up. And we drew the lane, so. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that sequence. Can also prevent the opponent from maybe reanimating one of their creatures if that's their plan somehow. So no need to use Cauldron right now. I guess we could get rid of the fetch land. And yeah, we see Stormseeker to next turn give Kalia haste so they can immediately connect. Which is gonna hurt. Currently don't have a great answer to that. And then, yeah, I could use Cauldron. I guess there's no real advantage. Better to leave more targets in the graveyard for future turns. And then play Gisa. Gotta be able to pay for Mana Tithe. Trigger Tiny Bones. Make Zombies. Let them untap, and then Cauldron can make more Zombies. All right, there's Kalia with haste. Let's see what they can cheat into play. Is it just going to win them the game on the spot? Yeah, Balefire Dragon certainly counts. So 
opponent can wrath our board for free. And it doesn't matter that I made all these awesome zombies. Oh well. We just needed a slightly different curve topper. Can send it back to the command zone. Got more graveyard hates, but that's not really what we need right now. So, yeah, I think we're just dead. Playing priest doesn't accomplish anything. Can cycle the scrabbling claws. I guess I could use cauldron first. Alright, that's not gonna cut it. So anything else they can put in play kills me. And how about a crime abomination? On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Jody Moag Ancient. And what do we think of our hand? Yep, it's got uh, most of the tools we need. Turn two, a way to commit crimes. Turn three, a way to ramp out Gisa ahead of schedule. Although Soul Cauldron does need cards to be in graveyard. For now, maybe go with the Mindstone first. And then next turn we can go Celestus plus Cauldron. Our opponent's going to be trying to ramp and generate lots of uh, Dryad tokens. For now, Florahedron. Could also cut it down. Yeah, that seems fine. Try and slow them down a little bit. And now it's Spelunking. So we'll see if we draw land here or not. A Scrabbling Claws. That's not bad as a way to commit more crimes. For now, play Gisa. So even if the opponent's graveyard is empty, we can still target them with a Scrabbling Claws. That way we can make zombies both in our turn as well as the opponent's. And there's Jody Moag Ancient. And a better triumph could maybe take care of it here. Although it just lets them replay it next turn. So yeah, maybe for now we use Cauldron. And this way we can also let Gisa tap for mana. Grabbling Claws can uh, target them next turn. So I guess we have enough mana to still Bitter Triumph. Not sure if I need to do it now. Can send in the champion. If they try and double block, we can punish them. So we'll pass. Emergent Sequence is next. That happens. And now a Tatiova. Alright, so we'll target them. Make more zombies. And then I could see it taking care of Tatiova before it generates too much value. Take that out. 
and our opponent has seen enough. Next turn we get to probably attack for lethal, if not add a Grave Titan to the board as well for even more zombies. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw here facing the Clever Conductor, so kind of an Esper control deck. Our hand's got potential. Can always sacrifice a creature to Phyrexian Tower to try and ramp out Gisa. Start with a champion. And a Transformer is next. I right, can make a Gisa uncounterable. Could also be quite relevant. For now, play the Idol. So next turn, I could technically sank the champion to already play Gisa. Although I both want it to be uncounterable, and ideally I want to be able to commit a crime right away. So I think we'll still use this as a setup turn. And then don't need to show them Cavern yet. But we can play Steward plus one of our three drops, or Relic. Opponent's gonna take out the champion, so now I can actually sack it to the tower. To play a three mana zombie plus Relic. And which one do we prefer? Maybe a Lord of the Accursed. And that Relic's a nice way to commit a crime with Gisa, as well as a Steward. So I could use Steward in my turn and Relic in their turn to make four zombies total. And then uh, I guess we can use a Relic now. Get rid of Infernal Grasp. Doesn't matter if the opponent's graveyard is empty with Relic. We're just targeting the opponent directly. Alright, so name Warlock. Play Gisa. And Sank Steward. And unless they've got a source to plowshares here to also pay the ward, we should be able to use Gisa in the opponent's turn. Opponent taking out the Lord. That's fine. Opponent got rid of a Sublime Epiphany. Okay, pass a turn. I guess we sort of enabled the opponent's synergies by making them discard. Opponent's gonna exile a graveyard. That's only fair. But we still have our Death Baron left to pump our zombies. And the our opponent has seen enough. Making two zombies each turn is just going to be too much for them to overcome. Alright, so we get to see our Gisa zombies in action, and when you get to commit several crimes per turn cycle, the deck looks awesome. Of course, it's still gonna struggle against some of the more competitive commanders out there, like we saw with uh, Kalia and commanders like Roxanne, are just a tier above what Gisa can muster, since Gisa requires a bit more setup to be effective, it doesn't have that immediate value that some of those more powerful commanders might provide, but it's still a fun deck, and if you like these types of zombie decks, Gisa can be a decent commander for you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.